Hey folks, um, today's video uh, is not gonna be silly, salty, happy-go-lucky. I will most likely just get really ranty and really ragey and angry. I do have to put a trigger warning at the beginning of this because I will be talking about the James Charles allegations brought forth towards him uh, with sending lewd messages and inappropriate conversations with minors and with his fans. If you're not prepared, if, if you do not have the capacity to listen to something about that right now, please click off this video. I will see you in another one. I couldn't not talk about this, especially as I would say an elder <laughs> YouTuber, somebody who has been on the platform for a long time, someone who has witnessed this happen multiple times before. I couldn't not say anything because I think it's incredibly important to talk about because YouTube isn't doing anything. James's fan base is so young and looking at the like to dislike ratio on his video that he posted today as I'm filming this shows that his audience largely does not understand the gravity of what he has done. If you do not know kind of the general gist of everything, um, I believe there's been eight boys who have come forward saying that James has uh, exchanged lewd um, and inappropriate DMs with them, um, has flirted with them, has gotten aggressive with them. Multiple videos, I will leave links to things in the description. Uh, multiple people who have talked about this already. And I'm really glad that people are talking about it because it's one of those things where it's like, you it's not just drama. Like crimes have been committed, children are being put in danger. And it's something that really, boils my blood because it's happened before. Not just to James, like James has clearly done this multiple times. It is not like a one-time mistake that he has learned from. It is a pattern of behavior that he has exhibited and that he has not learned from. And in his video, uh, holding myself accountable, that doesn't mean anything until you change your behavior. You've acknowledged your behavior. You've acknowledged that you've done these things. He admitted to it, by the way. He's acknowledged those things, which is like the first step, but that is by no means like the jumping off point to just like redemption, okay? To give you a little bit of backstory and like why it particularly boils my blood and why I get particularly frustrated and angry about stuff like this seven, eight years ago, Mike Lombardo was investigated by the FBI and was sent to prison because of child pornography on his computer, because he was exchanging nudes and uh, having inappropriate conversations with underage fans as a 20 something year old man. Shortly thereafter, um, Sam Pepper was called out for assault. Alex Day was called out for being an abusive and manipulative partner. YouTube has, has, has been piss poor when it comes to actually like holding people accountable for things. They let Onision keep his platform for as long as they did. Like YouTube doesn't do shit. YouTube as a community is how things happen. It is how things have happened in the past. So seeing history repeat itself again it's, it's gotten really old and I'm really tired of it. I'm really tired of it because people forget what happened to some of those people. Um, Austin Jones a few years ago also, I believe got sent to prison after they found um, child porn on his computer because he was asking his fans to send him videos of them twerking. So many people have faced a reckoning from the YouTube community at large. And seeing the response so far from his audience and from YouTube makes me very worried that it's not going to happen again because his fan base is so, so young. Now you have much younger people watching the platform, much younger people making videos, much younger people interacting with content and interacting with creators. So James Charles is putting children in danger. He is putting children in danger by continuously interacting with them in lewd, inappropriate sexual conversations. And that's never okay. Coming from a, a, an influencer, from a famous person, from a celebrity, that is never okay to engage in inappropriate and sexual conversations with your fan base. That is never okay. I saw, I saw people coming up with like, solutions to the problem, the problem being like continuously sexting your underage fan base. 
The solution is not to check for ID to make sure they're 18. The solution is don't sext your fan base. The solution is do not engage in sexual conversations where there's a clear imbalance of power. Because even if somebody is 19 or if they're 16, if you're James Charles, there is an imbalance of power. It doesn't matter the age. It is never okay for a, an influencer to engage in sexual and lewd conversations with his fans. Never, ever. And I really wish that I didn't have to remind people of this because what happened seven, eight years ago, it wasn't all underage people. It was other adults that were put in these situations where they were manipulated and abused. It wasn't all kids. Like, there's no excuse. Him saying that he was desperate, I'm sorry. If you're looking to your fan base to be your dating pool, take yourself out on a date. If you're looking to your fan base of largely underage kids to flirt with, to potentially date, um, you have a problem. But do not ever think that it's okay to reach out to your fans and also do not engage when they start the conversation because so many people love him. So many people are so devoted to influencers. Like we've talked about parasocial relationships on this channel before. I have talked about it. I have talked about how YouTubers aren't your friends and they're definitely not your dating pool. How do you not realize the power imbalance? Even if they're the ones that started it, even if your fans are the ones who, who initiate conversation, you do not Continue it. You shut it down or you ignore it. That's not that difficult to understand. They have an idea of you in their mind and they're gonna do whatever they, whatever it takes to make you happy. So that is never going to be an equal relationship ever. They're children. Of course they don't know any better because they, the person that they idolize is telling them that he's sorry and that he was desperate and that he is going to change his behavior from now on. Why was the behavior not changed after the first time? Like you want to know how small the YouTube community was eight years ago? Multiple people who were victimized by other people in the YouTube community, I know personally. So seeing what they did and what they went through getting forgotten time and time again, is so frustrating. You had so many people speaking up about Alex Day, about Mike Lombardo, about Sam Pepper, about all these people who, um, do we see on the platform anymore? No. There's been a handful of, of, of smaller YouTubers, people who are in like the million or less category of, of subscribers who have seen speak up about it and talk about it. But the silence from so many people or the 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 shenanigans that Nikita Dragon likes to pull by continuously um, supporting her friends who end up being fucking predatory. We see you. We see you not saying anything. We see you not doing anything. And we see you valuing your collaborations with James Charles more than the audience, more than the people who see how he's being treated. Because like I said, this isn't just like drama. It isn't um, problematic behavior. It crimes. Children are, are put in danger. And I know that there's not a lot of crossover between his audience and mine um, because I've looked at my analytics and the number of people who are registered on YouTube as ages 13 to 17 is like such a small number. It's like less than 1% for me. So I know there's not a lot of crossover, but I feel like because his audience is so young, they're not gonna care really because they love him he's their favorite he's their idol like I get it's probably hard for him to date like I totally get that it's probably very difficult for him to have a normal dating experience but that's what you signed up for when you uh ascended to the top of the YouTube food chain and you're grown up enough to know better and I just need people to understand that, that regardless of the age of the people he was interacting with, there was always going to be a power imbalance and it was never going to be equal.
and it was always going to be problematic and it was always going to be manipulative. It was always going to be wrong. That's all I wanted to say uh, in today's video. Um, obviously this video isn't monetized because it didn't feel right. And also even if I had tried, it, it wouldn't have been. Um, but I will new, have a new like lighthearted normal video up tomorrow. But I just couldn't not say something about this because I know how hard it is for a lot of people to talk about it because they've been victimized themselves. I needed to say something because um, I needed to show the same energy to stuff like this as I show to other things. You know, I get mad at people about shady marketing tactics, but I can't just make entire videos about shady marketing tactics when um, one of the biggest people on the platform is actually like grooming his underage fans. There's no song of the day. There's no fun stuff here at the end of the video. Um, I will have a new video up tomorrow though, a fun one. So please take care of yourself. Um, if, if you've been triggered by any of the stuff happening online lately, please log off if you can, because it's a lot, like it's a lot. Like the whole shit with David Dobrik and Dirty Dom, like all that stuff happened like what, two weeks ago now? Less than two weeks ago? And now this, so the internet and the YouTube space is very heavy right now. If it's not a safe place for you to be right now, log off, please. Take care of yourself because that's what's most important. But um, I will leave uh, links to some videos in the description as well as um, articles on, I think it's just Insider. I think it was just Cat. Was it just Cat? And it was Cat, Tenbarge, and uh, a handful of other writers who's been keeping up with this case. Um, so I'll leave links to those in the description if you want to kind of keep up with stuff. Also, don't watch his video um, if you know you can't handle it. Like, wait for recaps, wait for transcripts, wait for synopses. Like, do not watch his video if it's going to hurt you. And that's another reason why I felt like I needed to make this video to, like, let more people know without having to have them watch his video. Because, um, from what I saw in the comments, the comments were largely, um, negative, thankfully, but the likes to dislikes were, um, absolutely horrifying. At least the likes to dislike ratio on David Dobrik's original apology video was, like, pretty on par with the rest of the public response to it. But, like, this was very alarming. Like, very, very alarming. Um... So, yeah, um, take care of yourself. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow.